over the course of two days, um, my father and I made this tray. It is a tournament tray for a uh, different miniature war gaming game. So you want to do Warhammer or War Machine or anything like that. Here's your tray. And uh, it's made out of oak um, out off of originally a table that was discarded at a thrift store. And now it's this guy. I have the plan here using all the different bases. Base number one, base number two, base number three, and base number four. 80 of these guys, probably gonna take out this pocket. So I went to Snowline Hospice, which is a thrift store. Now the part about this that you want to be wary of is when you're buying furniture from a thrift store, usually what happens is the actual wood down here really just be a piece of particle board with a very thin piece of plastic usually on top or a very thin piece of wood. So you want to inspect the edge. Yeah, it was $12 and it was probably marked down as such because one of the legs was wobbly because it was unscrewed slightly. Really easy to remove and really easy to fix. And it was 50% off, so I got this guy for $6. I'm gonna unscrew everything. Everything is liftable. Our screws over here to the side. Moko was a good helper. And who's this? We have another helper. Hey, Rocky. You've been a good boy. Oh. Now, one reason why I opted to get this sort of board instead of buying one in store is because of how big it can be. So we got about 27 and a half by 22. And that's really nice for the price, so $6 for this baby. And it's nice, thick wood. I think what I'm going to try and do is make use of these nice borders on three sides. So you use the top left and right, and then cut across down at the bottom, and it will look fine, because that's really where it will be carried next to your body. Get all the grossness off of this. Because afterwards, I'm going to paint it to the color that I want brought out the heavy guns, so I'll be using this instead. It has to be flat, and that's why there's two hands. This is really hard to do. This product is made exclusively for this, and it's to take stuff. Look at the sandpaper. See, it's pity. Mm -hmm. Okay, turn it on. Alright, so if we want to make a countersink for this device or for anything about this diameter and for its figure, we need to counterbore it. So the idea is that we'll take and counterbore this and make a perfect circle. Then we'll later route out the extra material. Hmm. That has to be done before we put in the other circles within the circle. Size for the device that's going to go in the recess. Okay. Term? The fence. The fence, okay. This is actually a very dangerous tool. Which one? The drill press or the, the flat cutter? Why is that? Because it, it's going to want to pull the work away, so. Safety precautions.
hold them. Like this. Oh, that's a little tiny blade. What's this called? Rounded. This is a band saw. We got this guy in the middle, sized out where we wanted it. And now we're gonna cut it with the rope. Let's cut and with then the band this saw. This edge right here will go against this edge. And it'll make a circle for our little base. Yay! Uh, lots of measuring later. I have my guide set and lots more drill press, drill press work to do. And the original plan, everything fit great, and then realized, oh no, nope, won't be able to do that because tried to rotate all of the smallest bases down to here, so there are going to be 96 each. Um, overlap each cross is going to be the center of the circle base um, and I feel like it would have been better if this was over all the way and then I could have fit bigger bases but that's my mistake. Our bits which cut a flat hole for each size of miniature basing. Good to go. The set of 96. Oh man, uh, there was one oopsies though. The uh, stop slid a little bit, so it's supposed to stop here, but you can manhandle push it. And I wasn't accustomed to the push, so you can probably see this by the shadows. There's this one, which is a lot deeper than what I intended. And it actually like gradually gets deeper too, so that's the worst. But at least I noticed it at that point. Um, then you can see there are a, a plenty of little shavings. They look sort of like bonito flakes. Or actually from the camera it sort of looks like um, little carcasses of insects. Anyways, got those sorted out so now I need to change the head here, which is very hot. Uh, and get down to these, and then I can adjust uh, to a different stop to make deeper graving engravements in uh, these guys. All of them! Finished doing everything. Here are the Forstner bits. Forstner bits. How I feel about it. But epoxy is now in these because the height was so different. And I'm sanding everything down to make it nice and smooth instead of sharp. But, hey, you notice, you notice the difference? So I think what I'm going to do is paint all the bases black. 
or try and make the epoxy look like wood. I don't know. All right, an hour or so later, I have all of these guys painted in with black, except them because they're still drying a little bit, so I'll do it tomorrow. I'm gonna cut a slit here for any measurement tools. Originally, this was going to be a little pocket, but I think I'm, I'll put a little placard or something there and do a stain on the top, either a mahogany or a brown. So, yeah. This is from wiping it off the edges, trying to make it nice and clean. Totally worked, right? <laughs> I will be cleaning and then uh, finishing up with the rest of it. And I can paint this now. Use the depth finder on the table saw to bring it up a quarter inch to make it so there can be a little slit for all the measuring tools. Whee! It's really nice. It can fit two thin rulers, but probably with the plastic pieces it would need to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to make a second one and also make it a little bit deeper. Very nice. And then the radius will pull it out. Yeah, I like that effect. <laughs> this is a vernier scale. Mm -hmm. So this line right here says 17 and 3 eighths, and this line is exactly from the fence edge to the kerf, the tooth that points over this way. Right, so then it doesn't just rip it apart. This one's at 16, the top of it's at 16 and 3 quarter, and the next top of it would be 17 and 3, it's right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Line with this and this line with that one. Mm -hmm. As the saw cuts, the best edge is on the top, and then the blowout is on the bottom. We can sand off the blowout. Over here to my vernier. Find our 18 and a half mark. And you have to look straight over so you don't have parallax. you got to look straight on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just raise the blade. Get all the way through the cut. Size. It looks good. Yeah. Now you want to sand this with block. With block? A block sander because otherwise uh, you'll get you'll round it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more sanding. So we sanded in between here and then also sanded the top, which had a little more finish on everything. So that's great. So that we don't have too much in there. Okay. okay. Little popsicle stick and paper towel. Using all the Watco Danish oil finish. It's not just a um, stain, it's a finish. We're gonna have to pick it up all with the rag. But I thought it. it said it was Danish. <laughs> uh, no? Oh, it was cheesy. Yeah. Progress. Take it. Shake it. And dab. 
want to make sure it's super oily. You don't want to rub it in. And repeat. It's very exciting. But, uh, yeah, a little bit of a difference. <laughs> Ta-da. 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 Touch. Still oily. <laughs> Don't touch. <laughs> Thank you.